We are live. Welcome to She-Hulk episode 4 thoughts. This episode is called Is This Not Real Magic? So, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. Now, let's see. So, yeah, based on episode 3, I figured there would be follow-up on the interview Jen finally agreed to do. I guess the Titania copyright issue that's brought up at the end of the episode... It's, it's fine. I, I would be very surprised if there isn't follow-up on the interview eventually. Let's see. Actually, yeah, in, in the trailers, we see that they, like, show up at her house and, like, you know, harass her, the, the press do. I guess maybe that comes because of the lawsuit. Yeah, that, that Titania is the... Anyway. And, let's see, yeah, so Donnie Blaze is a reference to Johnny Blaze, one of the Ghost Riders, and apparently also, there's also a Danny something, I have to admit, I'm not that familiar with Ghost Rider, but it's apparently, you know, a twofer, there's, there's two references to Ghost Rider names. And we see that Wong was watching Sopranos, and the girl spoils the episode, and apparently had a very cool journey off screen, I really love how... Like, so much of the MCU, it's like, oh, look at this amazing thing, which I love. And then this is like, oh, okay, here's the here's the legal fallout from this amazing thing. You know, this, this time we don't even get to see the amazing thing. And when Jen, you know, first appears in the episode, she says, you look happy. So she is not just talking to us. She's seeing us engaging our reaction to episodes, you know, and and again, like uh, like in other fourth world breaks, she already knows about Wong, even though the character in the show, you know, when she isn't breaking the fourth wall, she isn't aware about the whole Donnie Blaze Wong thing yet. And then she says Wong is like giving the show Twitter armor for a week. They really misunderestimated how hated the show would be. But I do think it's worth noting, she knows it's a weekly show, she is aware that Twitter exists in the world of the viewer, and that it features reactions to the show. I really don't understand why people hate so Oh, right, misogyny. And, yeah, Jen makes a dating profile, and it's called Matcher, so it's like a, you know, their version of Tinder. The way that last episode had a, what was it called? I think it was called UC instead of YouTube, which is kind of funny because here in Denmark, there's a company called UC. So, yeah, I don't know if they had like a bump in profits because of that. Notice how I, yeah, not Mystic, not a castle. And Wong wants it to be illegal to use magic without a license. And that is, like, that's such a clever... That has to be a thing in some of these universes. Because, yeah, what if you do have, you know... Um, if he was a frat bro, and he learned a little bit of magic, and then they kicked him out. And it's like, he still technically knows that magic. You know, that that is the thing. Like, you can't practice law without a license, you can't drive a car without a license, you know, so so it is this thing of, you know, yeah, if magic was real, if you could open interdimensional portals through your will alone, through, through the, you know, yeah, what was it, practice and study, I think it was, you know, in, in the first Doctor Strange solo movie, so, yeah, obviously you have to put some kind of legal protection there so that you don't have people yeah so by definition not alone <laughs> are you hype banning him maybe and we see a horrible first date i love the tension about paying the bill very western quick draw energy and i forget who but someone else here on youtube pointed out that's the most tension there's been in the show so far. And there's been, like, life and death situations, you know, but nothing is more... It's, yeah. And Wong really doesn't want 
them to use Madison as a witness, and she spoils more Sopranos. And even the lawyer's magician. <laughs> and She-Hulk gets way more dates than Jen, but some of them are also very sad, and then the doctor wants to know about her, and yeah. No wonder they go home together. She ends up carrying him into the bedroom, which I don't know why conservatives thought that was, like, the worst thing ever. Like, it's it's just a joke. Like, I don't... What's the big deal? Let's see. And Donnie accidentally made a goblin and then opened a portal hoping to get rid of it. But then a bunch more go through the, the portal. And she hell ends up using one to intimidate Donnie into giving up the lawsuit. And Wong interrupts the date since she doesn't answer the phone. I feel like your father. And sadly, the doctor is not into regular Jen. Poor her. And Titania trademarked She-Hulk, so that's going to be the big thing in the next episode, I'm guessing. And the end credits show Wong actually sending Donnie to the mirror dimension. He probably won't even die. And Madison, post credit scene, Madison wants to know what drinks Wong has had. And like, she said that apparently, I forget what the other thing, but one of them was like yak milk and something. He was like, that's terrible. And she's like, I, I, I'd like to try that, actually. And then she asks the magic question, what's your favorite drink? Gin and tonic. And she saw, you know, as they go to find bottomless gin and tonic. She's such a positive person. Like, she... I, I think, like, this is this is a show made by, about, and for women. I think there might be, like, you know, it's, it's career women. You know, 30-something women who are focusing on a career, who aren't out drinking all the time, even though they may have been in their 20s, which is perfectly fine. I think there might be, like, Madison is like, ah, oh, remember when we were like this? Ah, that's, that was fun. That was fun. But it's over now, and that's okay, you know. Let's see. Yeah, since the show is made by women, primarily for women, I don't mind that they made fun of the stereotypical young party girl. Like, if, if it was made by and for straight men, that, you know, it might be an issue. I've seen a lot of that stereotype in movies made by and for straight men. And one big difference is that she's frequently this non-threatening sex object, easy to get into bed. Despite how much time she spends around Donnie Blaze and Wong, she never talks about sex with them, nor do they bring it up. Like, <clears throat> think about how easily it could have been, like, when, when she's on stage with Donnie, like, one of them could bring up you know, maybe we could get together after the show or something. And it's not like the show is scared of sex. You know, it, it gets brought up. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, with, with Wong, it's, it's never, yeah. And her going to the other dimension isn't painted as some sort of damsel in distress. She's not made out to be ridiculous or pathetic. She actually seems to have fairly easily gotten back out of there, only experiencing some absurd things which she doesn't seem to fully understand because she's so drunk. The camera never leers at her. She is funny because of her attitude around some really dangerous things, not because of, like, negative misogynistic stereotypes. And it's also worth noting... The episode never punishes her for her identity and the way she carries herself. Plenty of people would have been willing to go through the portal at the start of the movie. And her witness testimony appears to be very effective for the case. It's not quite... They don't quite get the, the license thing fast enough, so they have to... You know, She-Hulk has to employ other methods. But nevertheless, you know, she was very convincing. And that's another thing. Like, there would... So many of these, you know, she would go on the stand and it would be like, oh, she's, she's just useless because she's so drunk. And she does manage to get through the various dimensions. She stays in a good mood through the entire episode. She's fun to be around. Even Wong eventually agrees to hang out, despite all the Soprano spoilers. You know, and it, t it does take a lot to get Wong, you know, like, it. it's not impossible. It has happened before. Katie and Sean also managed, but 
yeah, it it's you know, a lot of the time he's a he's a very serious person, very responsible, and you know, yeah, they're gonna go out drinking. You know, where she she she's the one who says, let's go find a place with bottomless gin and tonic. He doesn't say no. He's like, you know, it's, it's okay. We can we can have some fun. Now, uh, let's see, there was one other thing about Madison, right, yeah, you know, she said, she said that the thing about, let's see, she, she calls him Jake, various people on the internet already convinced that it's Mephisto, but she says that, you know, she actually, she apparently recalls it quite well, which is very impressive, he said that the consequences would be Death, the death and destruction of me and everyone I love, and then she says, which just sounds so dramatic, and I'm not into drama. That's a very healthy attitude. I, you know, again, it's funny because no, let's it's it's more than drama, but yeah, it's it's you sh you should you know don't don't yeah. And I can totally see how sometimes frat bros get into camaraderie. And he apparently summoned three kegs and his old frat bro Kai dog, which is just wow. Yeah, I. <laughs> Let's see. I wonder how many conservative men are going to look at this episode written and directed by women, which very clearly communicates that what women want from a man is someone sensitive, who cares, who listens, and these conservative men were rejected out of hand as they have the many studies. Like, I remember being a child, like we're talking 20 years ago, there were already polls where women would say they want someone sweet, gentle, with a good personality, they don't want someone who's constantly trying to prove that they're strong, especially physically, which is what a lot of conservative men, they're like, oh, you gotta be alpha, and you gotta be, you know, incredibly strong, and if there's another man who's like showing any kind of interest in her, in the woman even if like it's the father or the brother who like maybe protective of her you got to assert your masculine women don't want some women fair enough some women do want that but a lot of women really really don't and these conservative men like they spend so much time and energy de like devoting so much time and energy to these things that women have said over and over over decades do not want and then these conservative men are like I don't understand why I can't get a date and Jesse Gender points out that she as a trans woman trans woman experienced people dating her just because of that so maybe that's what the show is getting at with Jen getting more dates as she yells and then fetishize her for her identity and right this episode featured another line that conservatives flipped out over when it appeared in trailers is there anything more depressing than dating in your 30s she's obviously joking she's a lawyer she's a serious person she knows that there are far more depressing things out there it's it's a joke i i don't conservatives love saying oh it's just a joke why are you getting so offended but then they get offended at things that are obviously just jokes. The character isn't saying that it's the most depressing thing in the world. The show isn't saying it. Disney isn't saying it. And Disney knows because they exploit things that are more depressing. It's also really messed up. Uh, you know, all the conservatives that make a big stink about, ah, oh, the show's CGI is so bad, without pointing out that the effects artists are overworked. It's not very, really, it's no longer difficult to learn that fact. Like, the conservatives love make you know, saying, oh, it's such a lazy show. And one of the things they point to is the CGI. And that's because they're overworked and it's like, ah, what's it called? The, the, it's pushed. The, the release is, is, you know, yeah, they're not given enough time to do a, an incredible job. Treat special effects people with respect. They work extremely hard. As usual, I recommend Organized Chaos video on The Critical Drinker. One thing I'm not sure he pointed out, maybe I missed it. The Critical Drinker claims that the opening scene shows Nikki the Paralegal telling the audience what to think. I realized that that used to be 
you know, film language. If a character says something, then we're just supposed to accept that as true. But if the if the movie or show is also showing you the thing that is being commented on, very frequently it's just showing, like, he might as well say, oh, you know, we're supposed to listen to Dennis, it's clearly a terrible presentation. I mean, neither of these characters are, like, flawless. You know, Dennis is clearly much worse. Like, it's showing that a misogynistic man is going to criticize the the this final statement. Also, he's doing it while she's still delivering it. Just like, shut up, let her finish, and then you can provide preferably constructive criticism. But like, he's talking over her. He's incredibly obnoxious. And then we see that Nikki, on the other hand, is very supportive of her. It's not saying that like, one of these things is exactly how you should view the show. It's establishing the relationship between Nikki and Jen. Nikki is very encouraging of Jen. And, like, clearly, some of the time, that's what Jen needs. She's She can be kind of neurotic and insecure. And that's where Nikki comes in and says, no, you're, you're better than you think. You know, and honestly, like, if anything, I think the show is saying... Every, you know, yeah, everyone who's, like, neurotic and insecure, get you a Nikki. Get a Nikki into your life and listen to them, you know, accept their support. Because she's right. Like, it's a great, uh, what's it called, closing statement. It's true that it was the right thing to do to turn into She-Hulk and, and stop Titania. You know, these things... We don't know yet if the dating profile will work out. We've only, you know, yeah, but nevertheless, it's, yeah, you know, I mean, it's funny how neurotic Jen can be, and it's funny how, like, like, Nikki, she is, like, just bursting with energy and optimism for Jen, and, yeah, some of the time that's really good, but it is also funny, you know, you know, honestly, like, Jen's speech, well, it speaks for itself. You don't need anyone telling you that it's good and well-delivered. You can tell that by yourself. Now, that is everything that I had for this one. So, yeah, I, I can imagine... Yeah, it seems like this and Episode 3 are probably going to be the show going forward. You know, there'll be a little hint of a threat... You know, this episode, some, some people have theorized that the date who says, can your skin be pierced by vibranium, that that's either the guy who sent the wrecking crew, the, the guys who robbed Anna's guardian construction worker, or it is one of the guys who's, you know, because, yeah, it's like regular needle can't pierce her skin. You know, yeah, he, he maybe goes on a date with her, asks if she knows if Vibranium, you know, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, and other than that, just this, this comedic, you know, legal drama with superpowers, you know, where it is basically, yeah, these are, these are situations that you would not, like, they're, they're heightened, you know, the, the, in this one, it's practicing something important, something dangerous, without a license. And yeah, like I said, you know, you could, you know, it could be practicing law without a license. It could be, you know, driving a car without a driver's license. These kinds of things where, you know, yeah, like, they there can be serious consequences. But in this episode, because it's magic, the serious consequences are a room full of goblins attacking, you know. Yeah, so so that's... Yeah. And the... Let's see. Right, I, I forget who, but one of my fellow YouTubers pointed out that the thing that sets Wong over the edge, the reason he wants consequences for Donnie Blaze, is that... Uh, he, you know, Madison spoiled um, 
Sopranos for him. You know, that's the the line. That's when he gets, and that's also like when he's like pacing back and forth in in Jen's office. Like he is livid. I don't I don't think we've ever seen him this upset about anything, and it is this thing like. So in part, it's these dangerous consequences, but in part, it's also, like, you know, he's he's offended to his core about the three kegs and Kai Dog. You know, that's that was why they kicked him out. And now he's still causing problems. So, you know, clearly, this is still something that Wong just, yeah. Let's, and, and that's actually, that's how Jen gets his contact information. Wong shows back up for, you know, another thing, and, you know, he must, I don't think we see him, no, oh, wait, that's, yeah, he gives the, he gives the card, which is just like the, the card at the, um, uh, when Loki got removed at, early in Thor Ragnarok, you know, so, yeah, you know, it's, that's all he had to do, give him, give her the card, you know, they've met several times in, in, you know, previous episodes, and, like, the, the, or, ah, uh, previous, yeah, and, and he didn't just give her the card, like, it's, it took him, like, a second to hand her that card, anyway, but, yeah, the, the, you know, so, so this one, it was one case, and then you had the dating stuff, as the other part, of, I, I don't know which is the A story and which is the B story, but you know, in previous, you know, episode three, one of them was the case for Blonsky, and the other story was the case for Luna and Dennis. And again, like that's, yeah, Dennis got catfished, but through magic. And like, Ah, uh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Right, Blonsky. I mean, parole hearings. That's a that's a thing in the real world, but usually the parolee is not a green rage monster. You know, like the in in real life, if you know, if if the guy really ruined the the case for him, it would be like if he lost his temper, or maybe threw something in the courtroom or something. But because it's the MCU, he turns into abomination, and like, yeah. So, so I, I do hope that they keep the. Honestly, I have a lot of faith in this show by now. I, you know, I wasn't one hundred percent sure earlier, but and I heard some people say that the episode four was like the worst of them, and I, I don't really understand why. But, but yeah, absolutely love this. I'm really looking forward to, to the next one. I I find it really fascinating the way like of all of the shows, this is the one that has the most of just this very gradual drip feed of like important stuff going on in the background. Like so far, the most major thing that has happened was Jen getting her powers, and of course that's gonna you know, of course, we're going to see that and spend some time on that. Other than that, you know, yeah, the entire first episode is about her, you know, dealing with now becoming a Hulk and such. And other than that, like, it's, you know, oh, Bruce is flying off in a spaceship. Or, you know, someone tries to jab a needle in, in She-Hulk. And then in this one, it's, you know, could Vibranium Pierce? And and then the the... Actually, yeah, I guess that is it, yeah. I mean, I don't know if the, the final episode is going to, like, completely... Is, is going to devote a lot of time to it, or it's just going to be short, like, like it's been so far. Yeah, but I'm I'm really excited. I've, I'm not surprised that I love the show, but it's still just nice to have... A show that you really love that's weekly and yeah so that is it for this one catch you next week